Hi, this is Matt Stone, and I just wanted to go over what I call some, some dark truths hiding in the coronavirus statistics. Uh, this is really important information. As everybody knows, the media has been kind of hyping up everything. That's what they've done to keep us, to try to keep our attention, to try to get us to watch. They've been crying wolf for a really long time. And now, as this is upon us, a lot of people aren't taking this seriously and attributing all of it to just a bunch of media hype, because that's what they always do. Uh, I already made a video about this, but I never posted it because I was ranting and raving and shouting obscenities and insults at people for being so dumb. I'm not going to do that this time. I think we're past that point. I don't have that energy anymore. I don't feel like insulting anyone. I just feel like informing as many people as I can about the, the hidden truths and the the really dark, twisted, hidden truths that are in these coronavirus statistics that the media is actually not reporting because they are so dramatically downplaying what is going on so as not to incite a panic, okay? Um, but I have a lot of friends and family, a lot of people online uh, that I've communicated with over the years. I, I want you people to know what's really going on. Um, so the person I talk to more than any other on the face of the planet outside of my own home is my business partner, Brian. Okay, Brian lives in Italy, and he sent me this on February 21st. I'm recording this March 21st. So, yes, I've had uh, a, a really good introduction into what's coming. He says, dude, how crazy is this? The first ever case of coronavirus in Italy happened in my town. He lives in a small village called Cadonio. A uh, guy's 38 and is in intensive care. Okay, this guy is actually what they refer to as patient zero in Italy. Okay, and again, February 21st is when he sent this message. He's already spread the virus to six other people, including his wife, whom I know well. The mayor of our town has closed all shops, bars, and schools and has ordered everyone to stay home until further notice. Okay, so they found out they had some coronavirus there, seven total cases, and immediately put everybody in the area on lockdown. I, being like most people a month ago, and uh, being like most people now, uh, my first was to make a joke about it, right? Hopefully you don't get it, because if you do, your wife will know that you were getting a little too intimate with that dude's wife. Too soon? Ha ha ha. Well, this is, this is not a laughing matter, guys. I mean, this is really, really serious. It's so much more serious than you realize. I'm going to show you the numbers here. And um, this is not to, in, you know make you go crazy or to feel really bad about what's going on, but you got to be really prepared. you got to take this very seriously. Channel all your negativity, your frustration, your fear, your anxiety. Channel that into preparedness and extreme caution because this is unlike anything that's ever happened. And um, yeah, I want you as many people to be prepared for this as possible. I feel obligated to put this update out there and I probably will be doing a lot more to continue to spread accurate information, to be real with people. So when you see these numbers, uh, most people, they will calculate just the death rate. Uh, they'll, cal well, they'll calculate the death rate by dividing the number of deaths by the number of cases, and they get a number that's probably somewhere around 4%. Now, the media has been focusing on the original uh, early Chinese data that came in that showed people in China had a 3.4% mortality rate, okay? So if we scroll down and look at China's mortality rate here, um, we'll just focus right on China here, right on the bottom. They have uh, 3,255 deaths and the old uh, 81,000 cases. So let me pop this up for a second. So very simple calculation. We do 3,255. I know this may be boring for those of you who are good at math, but give me a second. To do this and show you okay so that's four percent so it's not three four it's not three point four percent anymore it's four percent uh, but more importantly that there's still six thousand active cases so um, and then 1900 are reported as being serious or critical serious and critical is when you're on a respirator and you're really facing you know, imminent death. I mean, you, you got to be in really bad shape to be on this list. Now, the active cases, those are people who still have the disease. That doesn't mean that they won't become serious. This is a huge mistake I see a lot of people making. 
they see that most of the cases aren't listed as serious, so they say, oh, well, it's not going to be, it's not, you know, these people are safe, they're not going to die. That's not true at all. You can go from active to serious. <laughs> I mean, that's not, so this this uh, serious number is probably the least important overall number in calculating the real stats, okay? So if you look at China's uh, actual what you want to be looking at is the recovered, you know, the cases that had an outcome. So if you take this number and this number and add them together, it ends up right around 75,000, okay? So you're looking at 3,255 divided by 75,000. And the death rate is 4.34. So it's almost a full percent, 1% higher than the official stats that, that people are still tossing around in the media. I don't spend a lot of time watching the news and stuff like that. Never have. But every time I've tuned in to, you know, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, uh, to sample a little bit of all of them, you know, I see those Chinese stats getting flung around. Um, Korea, if you, if you scroll down, uh, South Korea, uh, similar numbers. They've only had 102 deaths and tons of recoveries. So they're seeing some really good numbers. Uh, you know, numbers there. Okay. You scroll down and you see Japan, you know, they were able to contain it very well. They have 215 recoveries, uh, 36 deaths. Um, you know, their rate, their death rate is considerably lower than, than a lot of people. You know, what did, what did Japan, China, and South Korea have in common? Um, well, they're, they're full of Asians, right? And Asians are a different, you know, they had, they're different genetically. Plus, um, you know, being Chinese, we can't really book on that. We can't really bank on that because, you know, a lot of these influenzas and respiratory diseases, I mean, these are emerging over in China. Um, you know, they have a little bit more of an opportunity to build Im immunity to these things. And um, so, you know, what you really need to be looking at, and this is, this is the scary part, and this is what, you know, turned things around for me and had me take it seriously is when I saw um, the new deaths in Italy start to reach about 250 a day because the death rate wasn't that bad. It looked like it was kind of like China's death rate. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it just seemed to take off. Now, you hear a lot about, you know, this whole uh, care curve, uh, you know, like, we don't want to overrun the hospitals or we won't be able to give people proper medical care. Um, you know, it's a fear. I think that's, you know, that's a worthy fear. I hear about people in Italy being old and most of the people who are dying being old. You know, it's probably true. But, um, you know, the reality is that the total deaths are, are 4825. And the total recovery is only 6072. All right, this is the scariest number of all. Um, so we know the minimum death rate in China is probably 4.34%. Okay. That's probably the absolute minimum mortality rate. You can count on at least that wherever you are. Okay. But in Italy, if you take these two numbers together, you take the 4,800, the 6,072, you get almost exactly 11,000. So we're going to do 4825 divided by 11,000, and you get 43.9, basically, four, let's call it 44%. So the mortality rate could be as high as 44%. <laughs> Big difference. We're hearing 3.4%. Real mortality rate could be as high as 44%. Now, I don't think it'll end up being quite that bad, but it's it's going to get worse. Now, you might scroll down and you think, okay, well, Italy, maybe their healthcare system sucks. Well, it's ranked second in the world, but maybe the people doing the rankings are, you know, part of the deep state or something. I don't know, whatever conspiracy that you want to toss around. Believe me, I've had exposure to them all. I know them all. You're not going to stump me and toss something. You know, I'm not overlooking some information that I that you found that I haven't. Um, let's look at uh, USA. We see 324. Most people are doing the calculation just like that, right? They're just doing the straight mortality rate. Sorry to keep bouncing my calculator around. But they just see this USA rate, 324. It's only killed 324 people out of 26,011 cases. You know, this is like we've had flus that were this bad. And that's true. We have had flus where the death rate was as high as 1%. 
So, you know, I can understand people want to paint this in a rosy way and they're upset about, you know, the economy tanking. Believe me, guys, the economy ain't going to mean shit to you in a week. Or in, and if it does, it's in a month from now. You're just not going to care about that. It doesn't matter right now. You know, our economy's fake anyway. It's just based on, you know, rising prices uh, create this big flow of money that people toss around that gets spent on goods and services. I mean, as soon as prices start falling, the whole thing implodes. It's not, it's not, <laughs> like, it doesn't have any real basis, Okay. So you see that number, and, and that's just, you know, this is too early to tell, but we only have 176 recoveries. And what's going on here is that um, so many of these cases are new cases, okay? So many of these are new cases that what, what's happening here is that people haven't, most of the people, 95%, 99% of the cases, they haven't had coronavirus long enough to die from it. Or recover from it. They haven't had an outcome. They they haven't had it. You don't get it and die the next day. You don't get it and die in a week. Probably a lot of people probably don't get it and die in two weeks. It takes a long time to slowly suffocate and have your lungs fill up with fluid before you can't breathe anymore, even with a respirator. That's not that's not a process that that happens in 24 or 48 hours. I mean, this it takes a long time before these stats start to ke catch up. So. I'm guessing death rate in the U.S. Uh, is, you know, a lot of it's happening in New York right now, and New York is a fairly young city, and a lot of the cases that are being reported are, are young people. So I do think the early death stats are probably going to be more favorable, much more favorable than Italy. I don't think we're going to start to to see that, but I wouldn't count on that. I mean, it's a time of uncertainty. We don't really know. We know how bad it can be. Um, it could be as bad as 44% mortality rate, guys. I mean, this is like the plague of all plagues, and it spreads so easily. I mean, estimates are it spreads twice as easily as the flu, and certainly it seems that way. Um, you know, the fact that you could have it for, you know, 5 to 12 days or something like that before showing any signs and symptoms and be out there in the world interacting with people, spreading it all over the place <laughs> is... Um, you know, what makes this so scary and hard to stop? And it's going to take extreme social isolation slash distancing um, to get through all this. But, you know, when you see these new cases per day of 6,700, um, you know, probably at least 10% of those people are, are, are going to die. So, you know, these are, these are, you can book that this is going to be at least 672 deaths from today they're going to happen a few weeks down the line. So you can start to see these death tolls just start taking these huge leaps. And you're seeing the same thing in Spain, right? If we look at Spain's death rate, they have total deaths of 1378. Um, and then the total is going to be uh, 3,500 divided by 3,500. is 39%, 39.4%. I mean, I think it's really clear that the death rates are going to be really high, guys. And, you know, it seems like if we had to, if we had to pin down an ethnicity that, that is getting hit the hardest, uh, you know, people of European descent are getting just absolutely slaughtered. France, you can see here, I mean, the death rate is like 25, 26%, whatever is that, uh, you know, whatever that is. Um, Germany seems to be doing well so far, but it's just so early. These are all new cases. I mean, it just spread really quickly. Nobody's had it long enough to die from it. The UK, uh, these numbers, these death tolls are really starting to mount. The UK in particular, I think, is one of the most worrisome. Um, to already have 233 deaths out of just 5,000 cases, I mean, that's really a lot. So, I mean, it's it's going to be really bad. So, so what should you do? Um, here's what I'm doing. I'm getting a 90-day food supply for, for my family and I. And um, we're going to try to get that 90-day supply over the next two weeks. Um, and so, you know, you can get it from, you know, you can pick it up from people handling boxes, handling food. You know, even the delivery guy could be, you know, leaving his little, uh, his or her coronavirus-covered fingers and hands and coughing all over your boxes. I mean, you know, this stuff can live on that. So even just getting food delivered on a regular basis, 
to me, I still think puts you at really high risk. So I'm going to try to get up to a 90 day supply. It's hard, easier said than done because, um, you know, it's just, it's hard to buy anything because everybody, everything's wiped out, but I'm trying to get up a 90 day food supply, um, in the next two weeks, about halfway there. Once we get there, we're then going to not order anything for 90 days. So we're going to go 90 days without any foreign object from anywhere showing up on our doorstep. And um, that's that's what I'm prepared for. And I'll, I can go over some of the more stats later because uh, people are also under, underestimating um, how fast the, this is growing. Uh, the growth factor is just... Tremendous, and you know, by the calculations that I've done, uh, the millionth person to die of coronavirus is probably going to die before the end of April. So that's four or five weeks away. This thing is going to go berserk, and it, it's just the reality is going to set in for people. And by the time they want to order up a bunch of stuff and completely cut themselves off from the outside world, I mean, do you want to be handling food that's been touched? you know, by cashiers, stock boys, uh, you know, your food scanned across the scanner that uh, every single other food package is brushed across all day long, then touched by the, the person bagging and then put into bags that they put their hands all over after touching every single physical product in the store for hours and hours and hours. It's just, it's, it's, you know, there's no way to like get all that stuff wiped down and completely disinfected to where um, you're at zero risk. I really want to be at zero risk. I have a history of asthma. I don't, I, you know, I don't want to mess with this. Um, I have no trouble. I have to eat like a weird diet, uh, you know, just to breathe on a normal day, much less without, you know, a normal day without having coronavirus. So anyway, guys, that's it for me for this first video. But like I said, I probably will be doing some frequent updates and, and posting more, trying to be helpful, trying to play a part in people waking up to the reality and being prepared for it and, and displaying the amount of caution that they need to display. Because still seeing people calling this the flu. I just had an email from somebody early today that I care about deeply. And they, I think this is a bunch of hype. That's what they said to me. It's, this is not a bunch of hype, guys. This is serious. This is the big one. And you're not going to get a second chance to do the right thing. You're not going to get a second chance to, you know, be smart about this one. And the mortality rates could be really high, um, much higher than anybody is reporting. And uh, even even if you're not 85 years old, you could certainly still uh, get killed from this. And even if you do survive, you might still you might have permanent lung damage and all kinds of things. It's just nasty. You don't want it. And uh, be extremely cautious and as prepared as you can possibly be to get through the next 90 days is because I, I think we've lost containment on this. I think it's going to explode and spread really widely. And, uh, you know, the measures that we're taking are just too, too little too late. So anyway, talk to you guys later.